This is junk, said no crafter ever. Yes, we've been called hoarders and junk collectors, but what others see as junk, we see as possibilities. And truthfully, I'd like to put an end to all the name calling because what if we turn trash into art? Imagine all the money we could save. And I even have an added bonus as I'm doing a collaboration with my friend Carrie. And you won't believe what items she uses in her projects that otherwise would have gone in the garbage. Today I'm going to be creating one of a kind distressed tissue paper that you can collage as a background on any project using junk and several household items and cheap black paint I bought at the dollar store. Let's start with some of the junk. There's nothing more exciting than getting a crafty box delivered in the mail. Well, what if instead of throwing away the packaging, we used it in our projects? The corrugated carton creates the most amazing distressed lines, and the bubble wrap creates some really cool circle-looking patterns. For my second tissue paper background, I grab a simple plastic cup to create circular stains, similar to coffee marks, on the background. You can use different size rims to create several size stains. Then I use a broken silicone basting tool to create texture lines on the background. This not only gives movement to the design, but it's broken so it would have gone in the garbage anyways. Finally, I grab an old lid and add some more smaller circles onto the background and wait till you see how I use this collage paper to create some distressed looking tags. For my third background, I will be using some dreaded cleaning supplies, starting with the small brush, which creates the most amazing circular patterns when I turn it on its axis. And when I move it in a straight line or stamp with it, it creates what looks like tire marks. Then I take a toothbrush to create some markings, but the bristles are too hard, as I had used it before with paint. So you should really use a soft toothbrush for this technique. The markings are not great, that's why I moved to the next tool, a small brush that helps wash narrow bottles. This one creates really cool markings as well, which makes me think of how many brushes are out there that we could use in our art. Finally, I use another cleaning brush which I adopted as an art supply because it creates a pattern that looks to me like a bird nest. Before I show you the tags, I couldn't resist creating one final collage. I won't be using all of these on my tags, but it shows you how many things we can use from around the house to create these. I use a loofah sponge and just stamp on it on the page. I even try some markings with a scrub sponge. Then I use a plastic fork to create short, even lines. Imagine all the different utensils you could use on these projects. Now it's time to create my tags. I'm using two tags cut out of watercolor paper so they are thick enough to withstand wet mediums. I use one of the collage backgrounds I made and rip a small area to glue on my first tag. You can cut a big piece and cover the whole background, but I want to use just a few pieces and collage them together. I'm gluing them with a matte gel medium which helps to glue and seal them together. I continue ripping pieces from a couple of the backgrounds I created and collaging them to the tags. I like to include both circular and linear patterns so the background has movement. The nice thing about these tissue papers is that they are original and nobody else has these patterns. Even if you tried, you would never be able to recreate the exact same one. So it's uniquely yours. And I have so much left over that I can use for so many future projects. I store them all together with some older ones I've made in the past in this bundle and rip pieces whenever I need them. Once the background is dried well, I take some white gesso and using a palette knife, I roughly add it to the tags. Then I use a paintbrush to help the collaged edges blend into the background. You can substitute the palette knife with a plastic card and spread the gesso on the background with it. Adding gesso will help with the next step, which is adding color. And I will be using Tim Holtz Distress Stains in Cracked Pistachio and Crackling Campfire. First, I spray the cracked pistachio and spritz it with some water for blending. Moving the tag up and down helps to spread the color everywhere. Then I spray the Crackling Campfire, which is an orangey rust color, and blend it with the water as well. 
I let the two colors blend together while moving the tags around. The colors remain separate in some places while turning rusty brown where the colors meet. I want to add more layers so the colors will be more vibrant, but I have to dry the background first because otherwise the colors will just continue blending to each other. Once dry, I add a second layer of color. First, the cracked pistachio following the same procedure, but this time before adding the orange color, I dry the green really well, so it will not blend as much with the orange. Then I add the orange color and let it drip across the tag in different directions. Now the colors look really vibrant, and if you want them to look even more vibrant, you can dry and add as many layers as you want. In my case, while the colors are still wet, I splatter a little gold stain in the background and let it blend with the other two colors. Once everything is dry, I use some of the same inexpensive tools from before to create markings. So not only can you create your own collage pages with these tools, but you can also apply these techniques directly on your projects. I use the corrugated cardboard to add some horizontal lines, the bubble wrap to add circular texture, and even the plastic card to add a border around the tags. Then I glue the focal point, which is a dandelion flower that I cut out of black cardstock using my Cricut machine. I also cut the sentiment in a similar manner, but when I want to glue it, I realize it gets lost in the background. So I glue some old music sheet ephemera, which I rip into pieces under each word. I also feel my tag needs a little white, so I add highlights on the flowers with a white acrylic paint marker and I even splatter some white acrylic spray as a finishing touch. There's so much we can use in our art that is readily available to us without having to spend money on expensive supplies. My friend Carrie used something in her video right here that I never thought to use myself. And let me just say, I was blown away by the results. 